Creating a flexible, procedural liquid overlay system has been necessary for me for quite a while now. This liquid system needs to be dynamic, optimized, intuitive, and most importantly, visually appealing. Recently, I finally got around to implementing it, so let's get into the process behind its creation. I designed the current liquid system to replace an older, substandard version I had created months ago, as a prototype. The old liquid system worked well enough at the time, but as development progressed, it was clear that it would need reworking. What I ended up creating is more flexible and optimized, in ways the incredibly limited prototype version was not. I had experimented with several different potential implementations, and quickly found the most promise in texture painting. The idea is that the relevant C-sharp script would get a section of pixels, and then set those pixels to some value, depending on if their distance from the center is less than a preset radius. After setting the pixels, the generated texture would be applied to a material. This was promising, but it was still confined to strictly planar UV mapping. If I wanted to give the player the ability to paint the entire level, I would have to overcome this massive limitation. All of my static geometry has two UV maps, a messy, overlapping one strictly for textures, and a clean global atlas used for light mapping. I theorized that if the painted texture mask could be mapped to the secondary UV map, it would allow for the global texture painting support that I needed. The only issue here was that the world space coordinates of every edited spot would need to be effectively converted to corresponding UV space coordinates. So after fumbling through various forums and documentation, I found that corresponding UV coordinates were easily accessible through Unity's Raycast function. After tweaking the texture painting script to paint onto specific secondary UV map coordinates, I fed the generated texture mask into a custom shader that maps said texture to the secondary Atlas UV map. Apparently, this just worked and after tweaking the shader to blend the generated texture into the surface material, I was able to start integrating the liquid decal system into the gameplay. Gameplay integration not only involved allowing the player to interact with the toxic liquid texture map, but also saw some important optimization. Turns out it isn't efficient to shuttle the texture between the CPU and GPU every frame, so when the texture is being edited continuously, I added code to check the pixel at the center of the radial edit. Essentially, if the pixel's current color is equal to the requested color change, the code would exit the function early, which avoided unnecessarily editing the texture every frame. Once I had made optimizations and had basic gameplay mechanics set up, I began adding to the shader to make this look more like actual toxic sludge. Aside from the sickly green tint, the most important thing here is the use of pre-computed gradient noise to warp the texture mask. This made it look like less of a uniform paint job. The final step here was to give it an easily identifiable, nasty, rippling surface. You know you're looking at toxic goo here. So I also made some last additions. I added support for serializing the generated textures, and saving them to files. This was an essential addition for future level designing, and for persistence between scene loads. At this point, the majority of the necessary gameplay integration is completed, with only some minor additions and tweaks necessary in the future. After about three days of work, I'm pretty happy with how this dramatic revamp of an old prototype implementation worked out. The new liquid decal system adds a satisfying feeling of interaction with the game environment, with a real, persistent reaction to the player's action. Thanks for watching this development video. If you'd like to see more videos like this, feel free to subscribe to the channel.